Well, hello, hello, friends. <laughs> Welcome to the Not Your Child Road Safety Show, a show dedicated to road safety, sprinkled with entrepreneurship, with a hospitality cherry on top. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm your host, Julia Matthews, aka the Breathalyzer Girl, <laughs> and owner of Not Your Child Corp, a Canadian company dedicated to, you guessed it, road safety. Check us out when you have a chance at notyourchild.com. Now, as usual, we'll start off our lovely day today with a couple feel-good songs to keep you company behind the wheel. And then we head right into our discussion section, move right back into some more feel-good music. And finally, as all good things come to an end, we close with our quote of the day. So what do you say? Stick around with me for a great show? (laughs) Well, buckle up your seatbelts and let's dive into the Not Your Child Road Safety Show. What are you looking at?
And hello again, friends. I'm feeling great this Wednesday afternoon. How about you? How are you doing? How are you doing? Feeling good? Feeling good? I hope so. I hope so. The weather is nice up there. It's nice. It's nice. And I have a warm show for you today to go with the warm weather we're experiencing. Yes, I do. So today you have me all to yourself. <laughs> and we'll be discussing the two people I saw sleeping it off in their cars. Yes, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about you. We will, <laughs> we will deep dive into that topic right after our musical selection. Don't you touch that dial. like to be the rainmaker I wonder what it's like to know that I made the rain I'd store it in boxes with little yellow tags on every one And you could come and see that when I'm done like to be a superhero I wonder where I'd go if I could fly around downtown From some other planet I get this funky high on the yellow sun Boy, I bet my friends are all really stunned well, They're stunned Remember I told you, our friend Scott Marshall, the road safety guy, safe driver, actually, he is back here with us. And, you know, for all of you who really don't know Scott as yet, well, he is our road safety expert that we go to for all questions 
very knowledgeable. In fact, Scott has spent over 30 years promoting road safety. That's longer than some of you have been alive <laughs> across Canada and beyond. He trains new drivers. He retrains licensed drivers, some of them who, you know, forgot how to drive by practicing the wrong things. And he also trains driving instructors. So he is the instructor to your instructor. So many things that we can learn from Scott and Scott is here with us today and we are so grateful to have him back. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Great. <laughs> so Scott, you know, we learn more from you than anything. So tell us, what are we talking about today? Well, you know, it's summer almost and uh, a lot of hot temperatures. So we, we as drivers have to keep our cool. So uh, I'm going to provide some tips, maybe some reminders, some some things we either we didn't know or things that we forgot over the years Great. on how to stay cool uh, while driving. Cool. OK, well, geez, that even now that's that that might be um, a challenge because gas is so high. <laughs> but I know what you mean by having a cool head. But go yes. ahead. Uh, we're, we're listening. We're, we're, we're eager to hear um, what you have to give us today. Well, let, let's start off even before we drive, and, and we do hear it, unfortunately, we, we mm -hmm. do hear how uh, drivers will leave either their kids or, or their pets in their vehicle uh, on a hot day, and it doesn't have to be super hot, it doesn't have to be a heat wave kind of hot uh, for it to create a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a few things that people may not be aware of that I, I think I, I'd like to share here. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I wanted to find out myself just how quickly it, it gets hot in the car. So I became a guinea pig and I said, I'm a guinea pig. I am. I, I, do, I do like my leaf right. greens. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to find out exactly what it'd be like if I sat in a vehicle on a hot day. So the temperature was in the mid 20s. So it wasn't super, super hot, but it wasn't just warm. So it was still a, a pretty hot day. So the air conditioning was on in the, in the car. I parked it. And I opened up the window a couple of inches or five centimeters for metricers. And uh, that's what people say. Well, I cracked open the window. Right. It's all good. Well, let, let's really find out. So when I did this, um, <clears throat> after about one minute of turning off the engine, the interior of the, of the car, the temperature was 25.4 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. which is about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. And, and that's it's kind of warm, but it's very doable, right? So I waited for about five minutes and then I checked the temperature again. Now, again, the window was open mm -hmm. a couple inches and uh, a, a tiny bit of a breeze, but not a windy day. Right. In five minutes, the temperature went from 25.4 Celsius to 31.7 Celsius. In five minutes? In five minutes. Now that's 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Five minutes. So people who say, I'll be back in five minutes. Well, if someone has, including a child or even an adult, a senior too, has a breathing uh, issue where they, they might be on a puff or whatever, that is pretty, pretty tough to do. Yeah. So, um, you know what the thinking is, if, if, if I may, I don't want to inter it just hold a thought, but you know what the thinking is, because I've heard it so many times. I left a window open so that the cool air can come into the car. People don't think that the hot air is coming into the car and it's getting hotter. They're thinking that, oh, however hot it, it is in the car, it will be released out. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they're thinking, like the heat will escape from the car instead of thinking that it's actually a metal coffin and it's it would it can be and it, it actually heats itself up yeah. and i i thought that way for a long time too in my teen years i thought that okay you wind the window down it's okay especially because i was in you know the tropics in jamaica so you're thinking wind the window down the heat will escape and but you're not thinking about the heat coming in am i right i don't know so, part, it, it, part of it's the heat coming in but but keeping in mind that the glass uh, uh, around the vehicle is going yes. to um, uh, allow the, the, the vehicle to heat up. So like even in the winter time, mm -hmm. you're feeling nice and warm in the car on a sunny day, but it's still minus 
outside. So mm -hmm. the sun does warm up the interior mm -hmm. and it warms up much quicker, especially on a hot day. So that was after five minutes. Wow. So, you know, I, at that time, I did feel it was quite stuffy. Uh, the temperature was, was again, make, I was sweating already after five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find out more. So I waited another five minutes. Mm -hmm. So now it's been a total of 10 minutes from the start of my experiment. And the temperature escalated to 42.1 Celsius, which is 108 degrees Fahrenheit in 10 minutes. Wow. Now, we all know when we say I'll be back in five minutes, it's not five minutes. It's 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So now at 108 degrees Fahrenheit, after 10 minutes, it was so hot that I was beginning to have a difficult time breathing. And I don't really have any breathing issues. Uh, I do it habitually. It's a good thing. And but it was because <laughs> it was so hot in the car, mm -hmm. there wasn't really enough cool air to breathe comfortably. But again, people leave their kids and their pets in these in these conditions. Yeah. I see them all the time. Like even it, it, I'll say about four times a week, I see someone like I go to the, to the store and I see and you hear the bark or you see someone, you see the little um, the, 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 the little doggy nose trying to come through the back seat, or you see them, right? You see someone leave their, their car, their dogs yeah. in the car. Um, wow. Well, absolutely. And you know what? I, I have four kids and when they were little and I went to the grocery store and I was by myself, uh, I, I brought them in the store with me, but I, I gave them all the tasks to do. I gave them all, instead of getting a buggy, mm -hmm. we got the, the baskets where you had to carry it. And they each picked up a basket and their job was to carry the stuff around the grocery store. So because they, they stayed busy, they were out of trouble. Yeah. So you know how a lot of parents, they don't want to bring their little kids in, into the car, into the store, things like that, because they're, they're not going to be very long. Well, but that's the deal. You, you brought them with you. You, you got to, you know, suck it up and bring them yeah. with you. That's, yeah. that's the deal. So I, I continued on. So um, when, it, when it got to that, uh, that temperature, one of the things is, uh, hyperthermia mm -hmm. is defined as when someone's body temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So after 10 minutes, the interior of my vehicle went to 42.1 Celsius. So that actually can lead to heat stroke. Mm -hmm. So after 15 minutes, 15 minutes from the start of my experiment, the interior temperature got as high as 50 degrees wow. Celsius. And that's wow. 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That can cause people brain damage. That 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 I know that I know that can cause brain damage, and it can, it can actually cause suffocation if they have a breathing problem. It, it can it it can really affect them. And heat stroke is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And um, even the 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 pets, and you see the the dogs that are panting and things like that, trying to keep themselves cool. But mm -hmm. dogs can also. Um, have heat stroke and uh, a child's body temperature will rise up five times faster than that of an adult's body yes. temperature. yeah as the vehicle interior gets hotter their tiny bodies they're just not capable they're of boiling yeah because they and they also too because they have less surface area than us to to let off heat and they're a smaller vessel yeah and so, they yeah. are they're very susceptible to heat stroke mm -hmm. and in heat stroke is a form of hyperthermia um, which the body temperature increases very quickly and can be uh, combined with dehydration. So the, the five minute turns to 10, turns to 15. That's the, the, the sad part. Mm -hmm. So a, a few tips for, the, for those of us who we've got the kids and we're making errors, bring them in the store with you mm -hmm. or time your errands so that you don't have your kids with you. Right. And, and people definitely like to take their pets and their dogs in the car with them. Um, but then if you're going to do that, then again, this is not a time to leave them in the car where you're out shopping because that five minute, if there's a problem with a few people at the cashier, mm -hmm. they need some price checks, that five minutes extends pretty fast. So um, yeah, uh, we, because we're heading into the hot summer months, I, I thought this would be a, a good. I think this is it's fantastic. But I mean, it's, oh gosh, Scott, I wish I, I wish we had a bullhorn. We could just like say it to the to the world, because I'm telling you at least four times a week. That's what I see, you know, mm -hmm. and the little dogs, they, they're trying to push their little noses out there, out, out the top of the window. 
Yeah. Right. And you can see them. And, and, and I'm thinking that, OK, well, you see, now you make me think about it differently because I'm thinking, OK, well, he's he's he or she, they're excited, but they're looking for their owner. They're looking out the window, looking for their owner, but maybe they're trying to get some air. Maybe that's what the excitement is. I don't really know because I don't really I don't really have dogs, so I don't I don't know a lot about their behaviors. But I'm always thinking, oh, you know, he's looking out for his owner. Maybe he's actually trying not to, you know, die. <laughs> Absolutely. So the other thing about about the hot summer months mm -hmm. is cooling down our cars. Mm -hmm. You know, your car's been parked outside, and you you open up the door and it's stifling. It's just so hot what do I do? Right. So um, there are a few things that we can do as drivers to help keep our interior cool. Mm -hmm. So that way we can keep our minds cool too and make, and make good decisions. So um, one of the things is if we can is to park in a shaded area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does make quite a difference being in the shade compared to being in the, on the hot sun, mm -hmm. uh, as I just mentioned about the interior of your vehicle. But uh, the other thing, too, is having a, um, a sunshade on your windshield. Yes, I was just about to say that, yes. Yeah, so, so having that in your windshield is a good idea. Stops the sun from beating down. And um, I drove a convertible for about a week. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the wind blowing through my scalp. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. About that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it was black leather seats. Mm -hmm. It was a yellow Mustang convertible. And I made the first mistake and the only mistake of leaving my seats upright. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, getting into the car and I just, I burned myself uh, almost. So uh, because of the, the sun and the, and the black yeah. leather. So just folding the seats forward, you only make that mistake once really. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of us who, who don't have those convertibles anymore, mm -hmm. um, what else can we do? Well, part of it is the air conditioning mm -hmm. and air conditioning makes the engine work a little bit harder. The more your engine works, the more fuel you're going to use. And because it's about a million dollars to fill your tank, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, what we can do is keep the AC on low, mm -hmm. but crack open a window slightly. Right. So what that does is while you're driving, the air comes through that crack in the window, mixes with the cool air of the AC and keeps it very comfortable mm -hmm. without having to use it a whole lot too. Which one? Which window? The passenger one? The the one whichever, directly across whichever from Whichever you prefer. Oh, okay. Um, I often do the passenger one, so I don't have the sound of, uh, I'm on the expressway a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I prefer not to have the sound in my ear. Yes. So I, I do this passenger, and it, and it works just fine. You can even do the back seat. That's perfectly fine, too. Mm -hmm. So something else that we can do is that because once we get in the car, we have all that heat. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing after you open your doors, don't sit in your car completely. Uh, turn on the engine, roll down the windows, mm -hmm. and crank the AC high for about 30 seconds. Right. So it just blows off all the heat off the engine? It, it does. But what it does is it takes a, a, a few seconds, a number of seconds for the AC to really start working. Mm -hmm. And instead of you in a closed contraption, moving the vehicle, you turn the AC, you're going to have super hot heat coming in your face, even though it's AC. Mm -hmm. So that 30 seconds is going to blow the hot air from the AC, from the fan in your face, but it's actually going to blow it instead of your face, it's going to blow it out the windows and out your door. You know, the people keeping themselves cool in the car is, is really important too, because I think it will cut down on road rage. Because you know how they say um, crime goes up <laughs> in the summer in certain places, right? Because it's so hot, people are frustrated. Especially now you're going to find a lot of people um, not using AC because of the fact that gas prices are like two something, right? Um, yeah, I think keeping cool and being less miserable, it makes you less miserable. And, and, and I think, you know, it has something to do with mood because there's a reason why we say hot head and you know, you're heated or, you know, you understand what I mean. I do, but yeah. I think people are still going to be using their AC. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tip about having your window cracked open a little bit means that you're, you're, you're going to see, you're not going to use up as much fuel. Mm -hmm. um, if it's an overcast day, but it's still uh, hot, 
Right. And I'll still have my, my AC on. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, if I'm going to work, I don't want to be all sweaty by the time I get to my of office. Of course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So those are the, no, I use my that... AC, but I just hear people say, Oh, I, they don't know what they're going to do this summer. One person actually said to me that they're going to be driving with um, paper towels around their neck. So <laughs> the cool paper towels are cool rags around their neck. They're joking, but Hey, people get it. People do what they have to do to, 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 to keep things as balanced as they can. So, yeah. And, and I think being proactive is, mm-hmm. is still an important thing for us as drivers that, um, we, we get distracted by the heat. Yes. And, and if it's all hot in the car and I remember as a kid, mm-hmm. uh, my dad, we didn't have air conditioning in the car and, um, it was so hot. We had, and where we were, we had to keep the windows up. And I was, uh, I was getting pretty stuffy and I was actually having a hard time breathing. Mm-hmm. My dad at that time didn't quite understand what the problem was. Mm-hmm. He wasn't angry at me, but he was getting a little frustrated because I was whining as a little kid that I can't breathe. Yeah, it was, it was true. It yeah. was true. It was very stuffy. So, so there are things that we can do. And part of it maybe is just to have a little thought ahead of time before you do the action, decide, is this really a good, good thing to do? I know we're all in a hurry, but time to take a deep breath and relax and maybe take a step back and say, this isn't the right thing. And maybe I should try something different. Awesome. Well, Scott, is there anything else that you want to add about the heat and keeping ourselves cool this summer and next summer is to come? No, just enjoy the summer, be safe. And, uh, you know, it just take one, one day at a time. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that. And yes, we learned a lot. Do you have at least one year in hospitality or one year military training? Do you have excellent soft skills and want to make a positive difference in the lives of fellow Canadians? Do you also live in Ontario, Canada? Then we want to hear from you. Please send your resume to info at notyourchild.com. That's info at notyourchild.com. And let's talk about how we can make a positive difference in our world together. And here is one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite artists. Here is Miss Mariah Carey with Vision of Love.
queens, I'd like to think the best of me is still hiding up my sleeve. For the business of the day, <laughs> let's talk about the fact that there are more events and more parties going on because, again, we're enjoying warmer weather. Now, let's talk also about the folk, the inebriated folk that think it's a good idea to sleep it off in their cars. We're going to talk about it because I drove past two different folk sleeping it off in the past three months. And no, they were not living out of their cars. It didn't look that way at all. It looked like they were just trying to sleep it off. So friends, please know this. Let's begin. Let's, let, let's, let's start from scratch here. You don't have to be driving impaired to receive criminal charges. You could be either sleeping in your car or even sitting in your car while impaired and be charged. Yeah, it's true. Okay, never forget that. You think it's unfair? Well, it's, it's not really. It's not. Now, remember, the charges come when you are deemed a danger to the public. And though you are asleep, if you're inebriated, you're still deemed a danger to the public because of the risk you are putting the the risk you the risk of you basically the risk of you putting your vehicle in motion yeah so you're a danger to the public even if you're asleep even if you're just sitting there now 
clearly this has to do because I said you know danger to the public and ve- putting being able to the risk of being able to put your vehicle in motion right now so clearly that has to do with where you are in the car and also where your keys are in the car now first of all you know what my advice to you is to just not think of your car as a shelter okay just don't think about it as a shelter um you're gonna have a really hard time trying to prove in court that you would not have and you had no intention of putting the vehicle in motion while you are inebriated okay and therefore being a danger to the public now a buddy of mine who happens to be a lawyer, he said that if the keys are locked away, like in a purse or in a glove compartment, and if the person is like, say, in the back seat with like a blanket or um, a sleeping bag and away from behind the wheel, right? And then the officer like, say, you know, taps on the window and found them passed out or, you know, didn't see them as a risk, or see them at risk of putting the vehicle in motion, right? Then that would be a different circumstance. But anyone, whether sleeping, whether sitting, whether kneeling, anyone that is found inebriated behind the wheel with the present ability to turn on that vehicle and drive that vehicle, you will receive charges because you pose a realistic threat to the public. Okay, do you understand? I hope you do. Now, this charge is called um, care or control conviction. Care or control conviction. So just don't think that, you know, sheltering in your car is a great idea or a great go-to plan. Okay. Also, if you think about it, it might be illegal in some cities and some city owned streets. So there you go too. That is another reason. And you know what? It's not safe. It's not safe. It's it's not safe. Sleeping in your car inebriated to we like to the wee hours of the morning. That that's not safe. That's not safe, friends. That's not safe. Okay. And also, what are you what what is your aim? To sleep it off? Please remember that not because you slept means that enough time has passed as well for you to drive. Don't think that just because you slept in your car means when you wake up, you're, you're, you should be driving or you're sober enough to drive. So another reason why you should breathalyze as well. Now, let's say here's another situation, okay? Because I always like to play devil's advocate. That's just how I am. That's how I figure things out. So let's say you are too inebriated to drive, right? And you call the cab to pick you up, all right? Let's say you want to wait in your vehicle. You know, because the cab's coming, you want to wait in the vehicle. Okay, that's fine. First of all, here's your checklist. One, are you are my keys in the ignition? If your keys are in the ignition, take them out, remove them. Two, are you sitting in the driver's seat? If you are, leave, move, go in the back seat, go as far away from the driver's seat as you possibly can. Three, can you reach the controls of the car from where you are, right? What if you fall asleep while waiting for the taxi? Will your hand be able to reach or hit any of the controllers? If so, move. So if you're going to plan to sleep in your car, some people think that that's a plan. Just don't. It's not a plan, okay? But... If you have to wait in your car, I don't know if it's, it's you're waiting for a cab and it's freezing out there, don't wait in the driver's seat. Don't keep your car in the ignition. Don't keep your keys in the ignition, okay? Because that makes you more of a threat to the public. Because the risk is higher of you turning the car on and putting the car in motion, okay? Put the keys out of reach in a locked bag, locked purse, locked glove, glove compartment. Now, if it's extremely cold and you're forced to turn the heat on for fear of hypothermia, make sure you leave the driver's seat. Go away from the car controls as possible. Personally, I would still just 
bear it. The cab is coming and, 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 and keep my keys locked away. You know, but I don't know how freezing it would be or, or, or you know, the condition. Anyway, to avoid all of that, folks, that's why I say, you know, if you're going to drink while you're out, have a plan. Have a plan, have a plan, have a plan. Know how you're going to get home. If you're the way home, monitor your back. Monitor your back. A lot of times there are accidents or crashes, right? When the designated driver was just less drunk. Monitor your back. If you're going to be designated driver, just don't drink. And if you feel like oh, if I'm going to have one at the party, but even you know early in the party, carry your breathalyzer with you too. Letting down your friends and having everybody take a cab home is much better than letting down your friends, families, and driving them and then, you know, causing a problem. Tragedy. You know, one they can sleep off, the other one they cannot. So it's your brack and it's your responsibility. So get one of our, you know, handy, reliable breathalyzers and keep it as part of your plan. Notyourchild.com forward slash driver safety. And you know what? I have a word for young drivers. Listen, you're not entitled to drive because you pass your driving test. I see some arrogant young drivers driving on the road. The convenience and the freedoms that you receive from driving, it comes from the privilege of being allowed to operate your vehicle. And it also comes with a bit of public, a lot of public trust. Okay? From all of us, from all of the users of the road, including the pedestrians and including the cyclists. Be good drivers. Start out well. Don't start bad. Okay, have your wits about you at all time? Have your wits about you at all time, young drivers. Pay attention. We'll be right back. If you see us at an event, come on over and ask questions. We promise we don't bite. We have all the answers you need about safe alcohol consumption, your BRAC, and more. And if you want to see your BRAC in real time, take our free BRAC test. And if necessary, we'll give you advice on your next steps for a safe way home. We look forward to seeing you. And for the island song of the day, this one hails from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, in fact. Here is a favorite of mine from Mr. Sean Paul himself. Shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I shake that thing, miss? And I better shake that thing, yeah. Donna, Donna, Jordi and Rebecca. Woman, oh get busy. Just say that booty non-stop when the beat drop. Just keep swinging it, get jiggy. Get drunk, stop, percolate. Anything you want, we're gonna toss it. Let's see if I don't take pity. More want to see you get life on the rhythm of my ride. And my lyrics up about the electric city. Yeah, nobody can do you nothing cause you don't know your destiny. Yo, sexy ladies want part with us. You know the car with us, them not war with us. You know the club, them want flex with us. To get next with us, them can't vex with us. From the day my bond I ignite my flame. Y'all yeah, call my name and it is my fame. It's a good girl, turn me on till I earn them on. Let's get it on, let's get it on till I earn them on. Girl, it's a good girl, turn me on. Y'all yeah, don't sweat it, don't get agitated. Y'all go and rotate, car. anything you want, you know you must get it. Come in, my mention, no easy tension. Y'all want the program, just go and fit it. Yo, have a good time, y'all free up on your mind. Kind of body can this, your man won't let it. Car, you are the number one girl, we have your hand, make them see the wedding band. Yo, sexy ladies want part with us, you know the car with us, them now war with us. You know the club, them want flex with us, to get next to us, them now vex with us. From the day my band I ignite my flame, girl I call my name and it is my fame. It's a good girl, turn me on, till I earn them on, let's get it on, let's get it on, till I earn them on, girl. It's a good girl, turn me on, oh on, get busy, just say that booty non-stop when the beat drop, just keep swinging it, get jiggy, get drunk, up, percolate, anything you want, for call it oscillate, if I don't take pity, want to see you get live when the rhythm is a ride, and my lyrics up about the electric city, y'all nobody can tell you nothing, cause you don't know your destiny, yo, sexy ladies want with us, you know the car with us, them now war with us. You know the club, them want flex with us to get next to us, them now vex with us. 
From the day my band to ignite my flame Girl I call my name and it is my fame It's all good girl turn me on Till I earn them on Let's get it on Let's get it on Till I earn them on Girl it's all good just turn me on Yo shake that thing miss Can I can I shake that thing Yo Annabella shake that thing miss Can I can I yo miss Jody and the one named Rebecca Yo shake that thing Yo yo Anna shake that thing Yo Annabella shake that thing Think, miss, can I, can I, dot, yo, yeah, hey, yo, what me go, so then, sexy ladies want part with us, in the car with us, them not war with us, in the club, them want flex with us, to get next to us, them not vex with us, from the day my band to ignite my flame, girl, I call my name, and it is my fame, it's a good girl, turn me on, till I earn them on, let's get it on, let's get it on, till I earn them on, girl, it's a good, just turn me on, yo, sexy ladies, This one part with us, in the car with us, them not war with us In the club, them want flex with us, they get next with us, them not vex with us From the day my band tight, like my flame, girl I call my name, yo it is for fame It's all good girl, turn me on, till I earn them on, let's get it on, let's get it on, till I earn them on It's all good, just turn me on,
Friends, you know we like to wind it all down for you with the quote of the day. And today's quote comes to us from Nietzsche. And he says, He who cannot obey himself will be commanded. Huh. Hear it again? Okay. This one comes to us from Nietzsche and he says, He who cannot obey himself will be commanded. Well, thanks for joining us today, friends, on the Not Your Child Road Safety Show. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Remember, head to notyourchild.com forward slash radio show to submit any questions, comments, or shout outs you want us to address on the next show. Until then, friends, I hope you continue having a lovely day. And remember, or golden rule, when you feel different, you drive different. Drive sober. Ciao.